the heads of government to take their seats. As we invite on stage Alexandra Ramson, Amaya Hall, Simeon Ram, and Joel Dude North to perform for us this afternoon the CARICOM song. It was composed by Michelle Henderson from the Commonwealth of Dominica and it celebrates our history, our culture, and identity as people of the Caribbean. Fathers came, some seeking adventures, some mountain chains. Two battles waged and fought, to victory and pain, by test of the courage of freedom was To those gone before us, the heroes of the lands in the sun. We bow to join hands and to focus on building one Caribbean. Raise your voices high, sing on your Caribbean pride. Sing it loud and strong. The bonds that unite us are stronger than these. We dance, pray, we love, we dance and we 
Thank you. We now invite the heads of government to take their seats. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll ask that you now remain standing as prayers will be said in the Christian, Muslim, and Hindu faiths, and an Arakuna indigenous prayer by Audrey Robertson from the only Arakuna speaking village of Parima here in Guyana. Prayers will be offered this afternoon by Suresh, Suresh Singh from the Hindu faith, Sheikh Moen Al Haq from the Muslim faith, and Pastor Mahendra Sharma of the Christian faith. Namaste, everyone. Namaste simply means the divinity in me recognizes the divinity in you. Namaste. Please put your hands together, close your eyes, and gently bow your heads. Vakra 
ಮಟುಂದ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭಾ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮಿ ದೇವಾ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯೇಶೋ ಸರ್ವದ ಓಂ ವೀನಾಧರೆ ವಿಪುಲ ಮಂಗಲದಾನಶೀಲೆ ಭಕ್ತಾರ್ತಿನಾಶಿನಿ ವಿರಂಚಿ ಹರೀಶ ವಂದೇ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದೆ ಅಖಿಲ ಮನುರತ್ತೆ ಮಹಾರೆ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಪ್ರದಾಯನಿ ಸರಿಸ್ವತಿ ನೌಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೀಪ್ರೀತ ಲೋರ್ ಗಣೇಶ್ ಓ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಿ ಗಿವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಕ್ಸೆಸ್ ಗಿವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಚೂನ್ ವಿ ಪ್ರೇ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇವೆಂಟ್ the meeting of the heads of the karikom be very successful may blossom into wonderful fruits for the people of the region secondly we pray to ma sadaswati the goddess who blesses us with intellect knowledge wisdom the attribute to distinguish what is right from what is wrong o mother continue to inspire our leaders continue to inspire our people continue to try everyone in our caribbean community in the shrimad bhagavad gita chapter 3 verse 11 states devan bhava yata anina te devaha bhava yantu vaha simply means by your sacrifice by our sacrifices the gods are pleased the verse continues to state by cooperation among humans prosperity great prosperity will gain among everyone this afternoon this evening we are not only praying for our country here guyana or our leaders we are praying for all of the caricom leaders we pray for all the caricom people as we put hands together heads together shoulders together as we work together for prosperity peace and resilience and finally universal prayers ಓಂ ಓಂ ಯೋರಾವೃಣೀಮಹೆ ಗಾತು ಯಾತು ಯಾತೇ ವಿ ಪ್ರೇ ತ ಓನ್ ಹೂ ಗ್ರಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ದಿ ಯಜ್ಞ ದಿ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ಪಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಪ್ರೇ ತ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಓನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹೂಮ್ ದಿ ಯಜ್ಞ ದಿ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ is perform om sarvesham swastir bhavatu sarvesham shantir bhavatu sarvesham purnam bhavatu sarvesham mangalam bhavatu o lord we do well in to all may peace to all be fulfillment to all o lord may it be auspicious is to all hari om shanti 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 hi hariyom hariyom tat sat Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace mercy and blessings of God almighty be with you My prayer this afternoon is taken from the holy Quran final revelation to mankind chapter 49 verse 13 which will be rendered in the arabic language followed by the english translation a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min zakarin wa untha وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لَتَعْرَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِندَ اللَّهِ يَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ In the name of Allah, God Almighty, the beneficent, the merciful.
O mankind, we created you from a single male and female. We made you into nations and tribes so that you may know one another, that you may not despise one another. Definitely, Allah, God Almighty, is all aware, all knowing. O Allah, God Almighty, we thank you for making possible this 46th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community. Our Lord, we thank you for choosing our beautiful country, Guyana, to host this meeting with you. For all the leaders who are gathered here in our beautiful country, O oh Allah, we thank you for blessing our President, His Excellency, Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali, to host and chair this important regional meeting. We pray for God Almighty to bless His Excellency with His guidance and protection as he chairs this meeting of August leaders from the region and beyond. We pray for God to bless all these leaders with wisdom to have fruitful discussions on the important issues in relation to food supply in the region, regional security, climate change, inter-regional trade, and free movement of all nationals. Bless them to collectively make wise decisions in the interests of the people whom they lead, to draw strength from our diversity and unite our people, guide them in their discussions and deliberations to make decisions which will benefit this generation and future ones and to develop the region. Bless our leaders with the ability to preserve and promote peace, justice, tolerance, and respect for all so we can retain our humanity and live with each other in peace, love, and harmony, thereby complementing our beautiful surroundings. O Allah, our Lord, you have made us the best of your creation. You have provided us with fertile and beautiful land, and for this we are grateful. Guide us to make the best use of this blessing of yours for a food supply in the region. Bless us to gain the maximum benefit from these discussions for all the people of the region. O oh Allah, accept our prayer. Amin. That's good afternoon to everyone. Let us continue to acknowledge God present. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, your peace upon our lives. We thank you indeed that your word admonishes us that this is the day that you, the Lord, has made and you said, let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for that purpose, that privilege that we have gathered here this afternoon, my God. We pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to abide with us, my God. Your word instruction, instruct us, let us pray for those that are in authority. And we thank you, Lord, that we are doing that. We thank you for our leaders of the of, of this Caribbean community, my, my God, as they gather here, my God, we pray that you would continue to give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, my God, as they, stay, as they strategize to make our region a better place. We pray that you would continue to grant them that wisdom, my God, that they so require. In complex time, we pray that you would be with them, my God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that it's purposeful that you have allowed this event to be here in our country at this time, and we are grateful for that. We lift our beloved president, my God, His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali, we pray that you would continue to give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, my God, as he sits and he brings leadership, my God. Bless, take control. We ask that your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, would provide that peace, that order that, that is needed, my God. Bless, take control. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. A prima man con your daughter. Nabotru than no, that's how the got man sing, sir, a non conneganing. Merudda, sir, or that Naya Samang, I want be my coy cheap man. I want be nyadi one the Napoton man, Yanaka, quite pamby prim nice roller. In Yako Kaka, a moon key. 
Mredpo, Trowra we kick him for that. Musa Mota no tongue. Tiburu tongue and a sat my young. Sewra Mazetna. Mua Mopona, a Merundurin Yongaka. Adau Karin Yongaka. Topu Payaku Becker. Top Sewra Margaret out. Top my Mukonekaka. Waku Benya Connick. Top Mandor Kurt. Honega Topetota. Sewra Caribbean Caricom. Thou the Sanje Brutong and Nasa Mang Amo, Pona Wakun Yonga Quadet Rover Tangi Kruguadet Nyan to Kenya Yanasa Kong Yanasa Puk Narker got Mangas out of the names, Rover We Quare Napona Mirunda Yonga Kada Quare Bradbo Nabia Wicker Wakun Yonga Napona Musamo de Bruton, we sell Margaret out of Piawaji to Cruz Aburde. Tangi Krugwadai, my muta wadening, Maza Bratukara Sewaku Kambo Dasra. Amu Jesus said thou. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to try this one more time. Please have your seats. Preceding the entry of the heads of government a few minutes ago, there was a drumming ensemble. That drumming ensemble is part of a larger drumming fusion. The entire drumming fusion will now make a presentation. This presentation and this fusion is an amalgamation of master drummers from across CARICOM. And it comprises Is the Vibe Entertainment from Barbados, the Belize Garafuna Collective, drummers from St. Kitts and Nevis, the Turks and Caicos Islands, and the Bahamas, Iron Tribe from Grenada, Shooting Stars, Tassel and the San Juan South Cultural Group of Trinidad and Tobago, and Drum for Life 592 and Rising Stars Tassa Group from the host country, Guyana. Ladies and gentlemen, the Caribbean Drumming Fusion. Thank you. 
Cross Country Diana. Please. Grenada. Good evening, Caricom. I said good evening, Caricom. It is a true pleasure to be here celebrating this 46th meeting. And it's an honor to be on stage with these talented musicians from all over the Caribbean. We're striving for one Caribbean voice. So we're gonna take some practice this evening. So I'm going to sing and I'm hoping that you could sing with me. All right? We could do that? It's on rhythm.
tickets and nevis. and Caicos Islands. Bahamas.
Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. What a scintillating drum fusion, the backbone of our music, providing the beat and the rhythm and the feeling that we need to raise the curtain on this meeting. Drumming, part of our cultural history and our vibrant regional culture. Let's give all eight participating territories a round of applause for that beautiful drum fusion that we just enjoyed. First Lady of Guyana, Heads of Government of CARICOM and First Ladies, Premiers of Associate Member States, Heads of Delegation, Secretary General of CARICOM, Prime Minister of Guyana, Chancellor of the Judiciary, Speaker of the National Assembly, former Presidents Ramotar and Hines of Guyana, Ministers of the Government of Guyana and CARICOM Member States, Members of the Judiciary, Foreign Minister of the Republic of Ghana, Minister of International Development of Canada, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, Permanent Representative of the U.S. to the United Nations and Member of the U.S. Cabinet, Chief of the Cabinet of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Representatives from Lesotho and the United Arab Emirates, Members of Parliament, Heads of CARICOM Institutions, Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, Ambassadors of Member States and Third Countries accredited to CARICOM, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Members of the Discipline Services, Members of the Private Sector, Students, other Distinguished Guests, Members of the Media, Ladies and Gentlemen across the region, good evening and welcome to the opening ceremony of the 46th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM here at the National Cultural Center in the capital, Georgetown. At this time, we'd like to also acknowledge some special guests, the Honorable Shirley Ochwe, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ghana, His Excellency Abdel Jubeye, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, prominent representative of the U.S. to United Nations, a member of the U.S. Cabinet, somehow that position got to welcomes. Baroness Patricia Scotland, Commonwealth Secretary General, Mr. Omar Shahaha Day, Envoy of the Foreign Minister of the United Arab Emirates, and the Honorable Joshua Septipa, Representative from Lusoto. We are grateful.
for all of you attending today's and this week's meeting here in Georgetown, Guyana. At this time, we're moving to the more formal segment of the program, and we'd like to invite Her Excellency Dr. Carla Barnett, Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, to deliver opening remarks. Good night, everyone. After that very scintillating set of drumming, I don't know that we need lots of long speeches. We need more music. Your Excellency, Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and Chairman of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community. Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica and outgoing chairman of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community. Allow me to accept all other protocols as having been observed. I simply want to say to you that it's a very distinctive pleasure to address you at this opening ceremony of the 46th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM. I am particularly pleased to welcome you to Georgetown, Guyana, the seat of the CARICOM Secretariat, the headquarters of the community, where we have enjoyed the warm hospitality of the government and people of Guyana for over 50 years. It is fitting as we continue to celebrate our landmark 50th anniversary year, and as we did in Trinidad and Tobago in July of 2023, that we gather in the home of one of the four signatories to the original Treaty of Chaguaramas, the framework and compass for our regional integration movement. On behalf of the community, I express heartfelt appreciation to our host and chairman of the conference, for all the gracious hospitality he has extended and the excellent arrangements which have set the stage for a very productive three days of work. Excellency, I have no doubt that under your guidance as chairman of the conference and with the support of your colleague heads of government, the secretariat and the regional institutions, the interests of our region will be accelerated. Over the last six months of 2023, our community was ably led by the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. We thank him for his unwavering commitment to his role, which has brought tangible results for our member state. At the same time, we warmly welcome the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada, to the Bureau of the Conference and look forward to his robust involvement in advancing the interests of the community. Allow me to recognize the exceptional musical talent of the region whose extravaganza, sounds of the Caribbean we just enjoyed. Their combined sound is a further illustration of what we achieve through effective coordination, collaboration, speaking with one voice as a region. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the matters before us at this 46th regular meeting will have significant impact on the direction of the community. The region's resilience, adaptability, and development will be examined in detail, as well as taken account of where we are as a region. This will allow us to pool our collective wisdom and devise sustainable solutions to the threats and the challenges that we face. Significant technical and policy work has led to accomplishments in various areas, including food and nutrition security, advancing aspects of the CARICOM single market and economy, border security, air and maritime transportation, among others. We work with stakeholders to help find solutions to the multi-dimensional crisis in Haiti. We are committed to retain the region as a zone of peace, despite various borough controversies and despite the passage of guns and dangerous drugs through our lands and our seas. As we continue to tackle these and other issues during this 46th meeting, our dedicated hours in plenary, caucus, and retreat sessions will be focused on moving our integration movement determinedly forward 
in the best interests of our region and its citizens. Later this week, we will be joined by our special guest, His Excellency Luis Inácio Lula da Silva, President of the Federated Republic of Brazil. Exchanges with him, as well as with high-level guests from Canada, the United States, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom, and the United Nations, will allow us to continue robust engagement with diverse international partners on matters crucial to the sustained development and transformation of our region. CARICOM speaks loudly and clearly in the international community. Our determined advocacy has helped to spur positive change for critical hemispheric and global issues. The decision at COP28 in December 2023 to operationalize the loss and damage fund and a growing acknowledgement in the international community that the Bridgetown Initiative presents a more relevant financial approach to addressing the unique needs of our region are but two examples of the advocacy, of the impact of CARICOM's advocacy. We also proudly note Trinidad and Tobago's presidency of the 78th United Nations General Assembly, Guyana's election to the United Nations Security Council and its current presidency of that body, and St. Lucia's election to the presidency of the Executive Board of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. Congratulations too to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which is completing a successful year as pro temporary president of the Community of Latin American and Caribbean States, CELA, the first CARICOM country to undertake this. These are all impactful forums where our region has a voice in addressing complex and multifaceted global issues. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our past and present generations of leaders have established a solid foundation for us to build on. Our more than 50 years of existence demonstrates that the Caribbean community remains a viable integration movement. We have shown a keen appreciation of the development priorities that are critical to the region's peace and prosperity. The stage is well set for this new generation to engage its innovativeness, ingenuity, and dynamism to secure and improve on the gains so far achieved. Mr. Chairman, as you carry us forward as a standard bearer for CARICOM for the next six months, there is a heavy regional and global agenda which demands our undivided attention and active engagement in spite of the ever-present vagaries of the global landscape. Let us therefore harness the wisdom of our 50 years of existence, learning from what we have done well and what we know we can do better, and move forward with passion and determination to overcome today's challenges. Let us welcome active participation from our youth, our women, civil society, labor organizations, and the private sector, our indigenous peoples, our creatives, and our athletes. Let us ensure we constantly work to bring all on board to keep our integration movement growing and beneficial to the welfare of all our peoples. We owe no less to the people of the Caribbean community at home and in the diaspora. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Surround us as 
as the fleeting years roll by. My Guyana times unfolding more and more thy destiny to redeem in last its splendor all the years had long to be. Plantation every live long day. Cut the sugar can't till it on my hand. If I never mind the work, you can get no pay. Cut the sugar can't till it on my hand. But now I'm breaking up my back in the bridling sun. Cut the sugar can't till it on my hand. And now I'm weary and I'm tired when the day is done. Cut the sugar can't till it on my hand. Plantation plant 
the sugar kid. The kid roll big and tall. And your bright little son money tripping red. Money for one and all. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mango bear, mango team, mango bear, mango team. I want a penny to buy mango bear, mango team. Give me a penny to buy mango bear, mango team. Mango to do say say mata, save a boo all for me. Mango to do say say mata, save a boo all for me. Mangoes, mangoes, mangoes. Dead alive, dead alive, Come, Mr. Tally, man, come tally me, but not dead alive to me. If you come check punch banan Did I light a me one Who is a six and seven and eight and punch Did I light a me one Who is a six and seven and eight and punch Did I light a me one Who is a six and seven and eight and punch Did I light a me one Who is a six and seven and eight and punch Did I light a me one Who is a six and seven and eight and punch Did I light a me one Who is a six and seven and eight and punch Did I light a me one Who is a six and seven and eight and punch did I light a me one? Miss a six and seven and eight and five. Did I light a me one? Me come here fi work, me na come here fi idle. Did I light a me one? Now give me so soft punch, me na horse with pride. Did I light a me one? Six and seven and eight and five. Did I light a me one? Six and seven and eight and five. Did I light a me wango? Did I light a me wango? Well, I born and bred on the Spanish maid, Caribbean man. I live in it sunshine, I live in it rain. Caribbean man, I could be Guyanese or Bayesian. Caribbean man, Trinidad and Vincentian. Caribbean man, I sing in Mardi, I sing in Kitch. Caribbean man, and I win in medals at Olympics. Caribbean man, and my name is Katanga. And my name is Balgobin. And my name is the Sousa. Cheroche and Chicharre. And my name is Katanga. And my name is Balgobin. And my name is the Sousa. That folk song medley by the Kaichur folk group and their friends Faith, Parika, Omaya Hall, Simeon, Rawarma, Melissa, Shripal, Sonia Singh, and Nia Allen, along with drumming from OKC, featured some of the region's traditional folk songs. Long, this time a long time from Guyana, sugarcane from Barbados, mangoes from Trinidad and Tobago, the banana boat song from Jamaica, and Caribbean Man by Dave Martins. We want to thank the Secretary General, Her Excellency Dr. Carla Barnett for her remarks which framed for those heads participating in the discourses this week, what the discussions are going to be about. But it also helped to frame for us, members of the community, what are the things we should be looking to our leaders for over the next few days. 
In that framing, the Secretary General spoke about the role of culture, and she did that sandwiched between the drumming fusion, which she renamed a drumming extravaganza, and the folk medley that we just listened to, two bookends, as it were, to some of her remarks. Preceding the folk medley, there was the song El Dorado, a staple for us here in Guyana in the way it connects our history to some of the myths and legends of El Dorado. And that was performed by Joanna Singh and Calvin Burnett. Calvin Burnett, by the way, is the winner of the 2024 Soka Monarch title. When we think of all the cultural items that were put together over the last few minutes, we are also stung by some news which we like to share. And that is that Peter Morgan, the leader of Morgan Heritage, passed away today and is a blow to the cultural community here in the Caribbean. Michelle. So we do want to extend our condolences to the family of Peter Morgan, the Morgan Heritage Band, and of course all of us across the region who enjoyed that particular genre of music, reggae, so strong, so popular across all of our countries. As we continue, ladies and gentlemen, with the opening ceremony of the 46th regular meeting of the Conference of the Heads of Government of CARICOM, we now invite for remarks the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica and outgoing Chairman of the Conference of the Heads of Government of CARICOM. Thank you very much. Let me first of all, first of all recognize Your Excellency Dr. Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and the Chair of the Conference of Heads and First Lady, my dear colleague Heads, Dr. Carla Barnett, Secretary General of CARICOM, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, good evening. Let me first of all thank on behalf of all my colleagues, the President of Guyana for the extraordinary, excellent arrangements made for the hosting of this conference. I think everyone has decided to suspend all the eating practices because of what we've been exposed to thus far and what we've been told we're exposed to later on. I also want to take this opportunity to extend congratulations to the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis and Mrs. Drew on the recent <laughs> marriage. I also want to take this opportunity to extend advanced congratulations to the Prime Minister of Grenada, who I understand will follow suit very soon. No, this part was fake news, okay? As I stand before you today, concluding my term as chairman of, the, of CARICOM, I do so with a heart that is filled with immense pride and gratitude. As is always the case, it has been an immense privilege to serve this remarkable community as chair. And as I pass the torch, I do so with a deep sense of accomplishment for what we have been able to achieve during the course of my mandate. I wish to extend my sincere gratitude to my fellow heads of government, the Secretary General of CARICOM and her staff, CARICOM institutions, organs and bodies, CARICOM's international partners, my team in Dominica, and the citizens of the community for their invaluable support. 2023 has been a year etched in our memories, not just for the global challenges we faced, but for the unwavering spirit and collective action that defined CARICOM. 
time and time again, we rose to the occasion. So it is only right that we join now to acknowledge the significant progress made across various fronts. Over the past year, we took concrete steps towards self-sufficiency through the continued implementation of the community agricultural policy, fostering innovation and collaboration among our farmers. These include budgetary allocations to agriculture, increased budgetary allocations to agriculture in member states, introduction of new crops, improved cross-border investments and collaborations, development and implementation of new agricultural trade policies and guidelines, and identification and agreement on possible insurance products to benefit farmers in the region. It means that we remain on course to meet our 25 by 2025 food security initiative targets, with the most critical one being to reduce our food import bill and advance food and nutrition security for the community. With the signing of a double taxation agreement, easing trade and investment within the community, we fortified our economic resilience and almost immediately saw positive signs of recovery of our respective tourism sectors, a vital pillar of our economies. As a collective, our continued calls towards raising climate change awareness reverberated on the global stage. We advocated for ambitious climate action, championing the Caribbean Climate Action Plan, which will safeguard our future from the devastating effects of climate change. With this upcoming hurricane season projected to be extremely active, I want us to continue emphasizing the vulnerabilities of our region and the need to operationalize the loss and damage fund. The need to operationalize the loss and damage fund. I therefore look forward to the SEEDS conference in Antigua and Barbuda in May this year, where we can continue to highlight CARICOM's unique needs and concerns and advance collective action. On the international front, international relations front, we deepened engagement with international partners and secured crucial support for our development priorities. But I want to especially single out the success of the first CARICOM Saudi Arabia Summit held in Saudi Arabia in November of last year. The summit focused heavily on investment opportunities, with Saudi Arabia pledging to bolster our infrastructure, renewable energy, tourism, and agricultural sectors. Let me take this moment to publicly thank His Excellency Abdel bin Ahmed Al Jubir from Saudi Arabia for your joining us at this 46 meeting as a demonstration of your country's commitment to advancing and strengthening the relations between Saudi Arabia and the Caribbean community. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these achievements are not merely footnotes. They represent the collective spirit of the Caribbean. They represent the unwavering commitment of our governments, the dedication of our people, and the power of regional collaboration. It was our shared belief in collaboration that guided us to remain peaceful during a period when other regions in the world crumbled and resorted to unrest. Every family faces friction, but strong families navigate disagreements with respect and understanding. They prioritize open communication, active listening, and compromise, remembering the love and shared values that bind them. My friends, when I began this address by speaking of my immense pride, I did so with memories still fresh of what we achieved as a group 
when we met as a family in December in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to maturely address the tensions between our two brothers. We made the international news, not for unrest, war, or violence, but for hosting of mature, proactive deliberations that created a template that others in the world would do well to follow. It is therefore fitting that with a strong sense of pride in our accomplishments, I pass the batter to His Excellency, Dr. Irfan Ali, President of Guyana, and assure him of my unstinting support and cooperation. At the end of my chairmanship, I have an even higher regard for the spirit of community that underpins our integration movement. I have full faith that the Caribbean spirit of unity and determination will continue to guide us. We have the talent, the resources, and the collective will to overcome any obstacle. So let us continue to work together, hand in hand, to build a brighter future for our beloved Caribbean, a future where every country thrives and every voice is heard. And in this regard, my dear friends, lest we forget Haiti, a sister country of the Caribbean community. Haiti needs the support of everyone in this world, every country in this world. And I do not believe that we have the time or the luxury of time to continue talking about helping Haiti. We need to help Haiti yesterday. May God bless our efforts. May God bless the Caribbean community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prime Minister Skerritt, and we thank you for your stewardship of the region. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming up to 7 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time, and in the final showcase for this evening, we now present If We Believe by the students who are part of the Young Writers Club in the Ministry of Culture. This is freedom from a diverse cast of brilliant local artists, and to round off this showcase will be our rallying song, One Guyana. Please enjoy. For another day, stand up on your feet, show the world that you're okay. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you're from. Big dreams have small beginnings. If you believe you can achieve, follow your dreams. And make them your destiny If you believe you can achieve Just know your dreams can become reality Free fun, free fun We're on a mission to develop Inspire, inspire Take the charge and lead the way The time, the time the only thing that matters, big dreams have small beginnings. So go and chase your dreams. And never give up on them. You've got to face your fears. Don't so give up, don't so give up, don't so give up. Here's your motivation. Don't let them tell you different. Big dreams have small beginnings. If you believe you can achieve, follow your dreams and make them 
your destiny. If you believe in you, can achieve, just know your dreams can become reality. You believe you can achieve. Yeah. Follow your dreams to destiny. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. You Chase your dreams, don't you wait for another day. Stand up on your feet, show the world that you're okay. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you're from. Big dreams have small beginnings. If you believe, you can achieve, follow your dreams. And make them your destiny If you believe You can achieve Just know your dreams Can become reality Reality Become reality Golden mystery, hush. She's such a beauty. Hush. We guarantee that when you're there, you won't want to leave. Have you ever heard the mighty waters roar? While the eagles soar, above the green. You know exactly what I mean. Most beautiful sight you've ever seen. Have you ever heard the mighty waters roar? While the eagles soar, above the green. You know exactly what I mean. Most beautiful thing you ever did see. Ride a joy in our history. Now we live in the ocean breeze. This is freedom. This is freedom, this is freedom, tell me that we are free. This is freedom, this is freedom, this is freedom. Paradise is real, GTS is the real deal. From the mountains, the valleys, the rivers, deep in the jungle. We're beautiful people, resilient and peaceful. Come back, we take you to culture for the the waters rumble. Hear me tell them, say, no more procrastination. This is your destination. Feel the rhythm of our culture. This is Guyana, land of many water. And them delicacies, believe me, you'll blow your mind. Tell me later, cause this is freedom. This is freedom. This is freedom. Tell me that we are free. This is freedom. This is freedom. This is freedom. We can hold a vibe, we can chill out in the city. Great land of the free, top land and to color and team. The opportunities are a lesson you need to come and see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, this is freedom. This is freedom. This is freedom. Tell me that we are free. This is freedom. This is freedom, this is freedom, paradise is real, 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 
Religion is you could a Buddhist, Christian, Muslim, Hindu. Sister is a sister, real and true. One people to go to rule. And all of we together could really make this dream come true. Of a brighter Guyana for me and you. Ocean to mountain, say this tune. Take it to you. We are one Guyana. Place of peace, a place of love. We are one. My love runs deep like a beautiful river for Guyana. Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. when we stand as one mighty like Mount Jerima for Guyana, for Guyana. Just 
put our hands together Give her a standing ovation This great nation is your gem of this world Yeah, 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 One Guyana today is like our pop anthem. We have the constitutional one, then we have the pop one. And it seems that very soon we're going to have a One Caribbean pop anthem too. I've got some late breaking news which I've been asked to communicate. The drumming collaboration that we enjoyed earlier this evening, was coordinated by Mr. Adrian Mark, the Chief Cultural Officer of Grenada, and Mr. Kevin Moore, Cultural Officer of Music at the National Cultural Foundation in Barbados. First time visitors here for this meeting should have figured out by now that we in Guyana take great delight in hosting visitors. I want to be bold to say that our president could be called host in chief. He takes a personal direct interest in how we are taking care of his guests, our guests, the region's guests. But he's more than just a good host and a good cook. Some of the heads will get a chance to test and prove this for themselves later in the week. But Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali is an indefatigable leader. Those who speak without deep reflection pass off Guyana's current growth as just a matter of luck and chance. Thoughtful people, though, realize that good luck or the sudden availability of resources while a good thing is not enough. It requires vision, it requires commitment, and it requires hard work. It's hard to find those qualities combined in the kinds of quantities in which you find them combined in Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali. <laughs> Clear vision, proven commitment, and hard work that wears down those around him. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand with me and welcome Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and incoming Chairman of the Caribbean Community. Thank you very much, very kindly, please. My <laughs> distinguished colleagues, My partner, and I have my partner here, my wife, but my partner, the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, Speaker of the National Assembly, former Presidents and Prime Minister, I, I, I think uh, the, the Chair omitted the presence of former Prime Minister Kenny Anthony, please put your hands together. And he is also performing a very important duty for the region. He is chairing the eminent persons group in relation to Haiti and ensuring that we advance in the interests of the people of Haiti because our region 
has one interest when it comes to Haiti. That is the people of Haiti. And we will not deviate from that interest, the people of Haiti. And anything that impedes the interests of the people of Haiti is of immense concern for the leadership of this region. Already, today, we spent most of this morning on the very issue of Haiti. We are committed as a region in ensuring that the people of Haiti can also realize their full potential in peace, security, and with good governance. We owe it to this, the people of Haiti. Sometimes, as a region, we are in tough positions and we have to take tough measures. But always, the region toughness is always in the interests of the region's people. That is fundamental for the region. You were, you enjoyed the brilliance of culture. In this region, culture is our staple. Culture is that common thread that brings us together. If there is anyone in this room that did not felt uplifted, even to the point of wanting to move with the rhythm of the drums, then something is wrong with your energy level. We in Guyana have taken a very conscious decision in ensuring that we invest in culture as a tool and mechanism of unifying our people and as a tool and mechanism of telling the story of who we are as a people. And in this region, we owe it to the generation ahead of us to keep our culture alive and to invest in this culture because the culture is what distinguishes us from any other region. A culture is distinctly different from any other region. And I want to make this point to all those who would have enjoyed the drumming, the lyrics of our region. We do not need lyrics that promote violence in this region. We have the ability to promote good lyrics and lyrics that will move people in the positive direction and move people to think, act, and behave positively. As leaders of this region, we have to take this situation very seriously and ensure the lyrics of the region is the lyrics of Bob Marley, the lyrics of posi positivity, and the lyrics of positive living and positive change. We must take this responsibility on today. For some, this may seem a soft issue, but this is a fundamental issue. Only recently, Prime Minister Rowley and I were having a conversation when many young people, young, brilliant people, questioned the decision of not having a certain artist perform in the country because that artist is on an Interpol red list. We cannot allow our culture to be captured in this narrative. We have to lead a revolution against this narrative and reposition our culture in the way it was conceived. That is for positive living and positive upliftment. And this is not about anyone or against anyone. This is for our region and for the future 
of the young people in this region. I want to pause to recognize our distinguished guests from the U.S. It's only in CARICOM we can bring the U.S., Saudi Arabia, the U.N., uh, and Canada so closely together. Oh, come on, put your hands together. What a picture. Saudi Arabia and the U.S. Shoulders to sh shoulder to shoulder. In the interest of a stable and secure world, let us all put our shoulders together. This region can lead by example. There is no war too big for us to stop. What we need is the willpower. What we need is the courage. What we need is the determination. What we need is the constancy of our moral compass that is what we need and if we have constancy of our moral compass then we can stand up every day and sing from the same same hymn sheet without worrying what others are thinking about us because our actions are consistent every day of the year and talking about singing and from hymn sheet my dear our dear, respected Prime Minister, Right Honorable Ralph Gonzalez. Even the most popular hymn you had difficulties with. The goodness of God. You could have called on me to help you. But that is the reason we live in. We can go to a temple, a church, a mosque, any leader in this region can go to a temple, a mosque, a church, and be comfortable. Because we do not see religion as a mode of separation. We see it as a tool of bringing people together and inspiration. <laughs> Prime Minister Motley offered the world to utilize a historical site in Barbados to build an international university of peace and tolerance in a region that understands how to live in peace and tolerance. We have this natural ability as a region. And I believe that every time we act collectively as a region, we were able to bring positive change in this world. And for this reason, alone, CARICOM is a critical organization and we should all be proud of CARICOM because there are many examples in the history of this world. When CARICOM acted together, when CARICOM moved together, we saw positive changes and positive movements in our global environment. Today I was contemplating what should I say. I've already said enough. But I wanted to point into a direction in which we have our friends here. And I think the people in our region sometimes question what do we do? when we travel. As a region, what do you accomplish? I can tell you, for all my colleagues here, every time we go, we go on a mission. And Prime Minister Scarrett was very modest. But 2023 delivered tremendous successes for carry come and we should be proud of what 2023 delivered for us it opened up many opportunities but just in the interest of accountability to the region because when we gather gather here as regional leaders we have a sense of accountability to the people of the region just to ensure that we fulfill our responsibility to the people of the region I want to highlight a few things and I want to put our friends 
also on the accountability compass. Because our friends would have also made commitments. And it's also important for the region to understand what those com commitments are and how it will be delivered. If you look at the issue of food security, which remains a priority for the region, and by the way, I am positioning these remarks in the context of the agenda for the next year. And I did this in consultation with the incoming chairman after my tenure in the interest of democracy. So the 25 by 2025 remains a top priority. However, we are of the view that we must now focus on ending hunger and malnutrition by 2030. We are proposing to bring together the human assets that this region nurtured into international fame, to bring their goodwill together as ambassadors, to mobilize international financing and support so that we can end hunger and malnutrition in this region by 2030. We have the capability. We have the Usain Bolt. We have the, the Chris Gale. We have the, all the Clive Lois and all the big names, big leaders. We have to use these assets to mobilize resources and create an ambassadorial mission so that we can raise resources, revenue, to address the issue of hunger and malnutrition. Around 4.1 4 people, or 57% of the population in this region, were affected by food insecurity, indicating a significant rise of 1.3 million compared to February 2022. This is an alarming number. This is an alarming number. And of course, we need not go into the reasons for this, the imported inflation, the cost, the increased costs of fertilizer. Forget about the increased costs, the availability of fertilizer, the availability of agrochemicals. All of this hinders our development. To this end, within this cycle, we'll be working with the Canadians, and this is the first partner I'm going to put on notice. We're going to work with the Canadians to accelerate and implement projects from their Agri Value Added Program. We held discussions already with Minister Hussein, who is here. And he has responsibility for the investment in agri value added programs and projects. For this region, this is important because we have to build our food system for resilience and sustainability against many different shocks compared to the rest of the world. The minister has committed to not only engaging us, but working with us in the coming weeks to finalize projects and programs to be financed by the region, focusing on youth and women involvement in innovative agriculture. So, Minister, you're not here only for the opening ceremony. There's serious work ahead. Secondly, we have submitted a regional sustainable resilient agricultural project to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at a cost of 25 million US dollars. We are in advanced stages of finalizing this investment to be made within the region that would focus again on youth, women, and innovation in the food production system. 
Minister Javier, His Excellency, we already had discussions around this, and we are hoping that in the coming weeks, we'll finalize arrangements to have this 25 million US dollars dispersed, dispersed in the region to support our food production system. Thirdly, and I want our partners to know that we are also taking responsibility. Thirdly, Guyana is investing in a center of excellence equipped with a situational room and a state-of-the-art data analytics platform to support regional food security and regional food production. The platform will focus on the area of research and development, real-time data technology, and predict predictive decision-making modules to help our farmers. We are doing this in conjunction with ICA and FAO as a regional project. Fourthly, the private sector. The low interest 100 million US dollars facility by Republic Bank Limited has been activated with a first 17 million US dollars disbursed already in food and agriculture project within the region. We'll be launching a program, a development workshop soon for the region to better position itself and its private sector to benefit from this low interest facility from Republic Bank. Fifthly, we are working with Embrapa of Brazil for the rebuilding of our citrus sector in the region, focusing on having one million citrus seedlings available within the first year, that is the end by the end of December, so we can revitalize the citrus industry in the region. Sixthly, we are working to build out the regional food hub to integrate production, processing, packaging, and distribution within the region and connect it to northern Brazil. Seventhly, we are working to have the region fully self-sufficient in corn, soya, black eyed peas, and red beans by the end of 2026. Further, and we are going to achieve this. Without a doubt, we're going to achieve this. Further, we are working with CAPSO in positioning our poultry sector in the region to be fully self-sufficient with full backward and forward integration, including the production of hatching eggs within a five-year window. This is the real work that we are doing in CARICOM. This is the real work that your leaders are engaged in, in making a huge difference in the life of this generation and the next generation. Eighthly, we are working on the expansion of our breeding program for livestock to scale up quality and production to meet increasing regional demand. Ninthly, we are working on the integration of our rules and fight the sanitary requirements and regulations to have a common regime, but more importantly, building out our testing and laboratory infrastructure. Tenthly, we are working with La Vio Pharma Company, veterinary company products, in conjunction with BioCuba Pharma for the production of biopesticides and byproducts for agriculture and the use of natural products in support of our livestock industry and food production. Eleventhly, eleventh, I said eleventhly now. This is a nightly thing we're going to go do now. The eleventh point, we are continuing work to address the removal of trade barriers within member states. And the people of CARICOM must put pressure on the leaders of CARICOM to remove the trade barriers. It is of no use and purpose for this region. We are too small to be competing against each other. People of this region, call upon your leaders to remove these barriers. Let them hear you loudly. These barriers need to go and must go urgently. I don't think we can be more accountable than that. Regional digitization and youth. Member states are currently working on the digitization of government services to allow for seamless transactions, movement of goods and services, and reducing bureaucracy in government. We need to develop urgently 
a digital strategy, an AI strategy for the region. Because if we are to integrate that digital platform, we must be integrated from conceptualization to implementation. We cannot all operate on a different platform. It will not help integration, and we have to take this very seriously. In addition, I believe that the region must work immediately on developing regulations to govern AI and the use of AI within this region. We must have a common rule-based system, regulations, and legislation to deal with AI. It is going to be disastrous if we do not manage this now and have the infrastructure established to manage it now. The One CARICOM Skill Development Program. Today, I had the honor of launching with Canada the Digital Job Platform for Guyana. We have already completed a regional digital platform presentation, a project to the sum of 30 million US dollars through the One CARICOM Skill Development Fund. We will ensure that over 10,000 citizens of CARICOM will receive skill development training in their country to mass the labor market, and these training will be linked to jobs. The initiative will help to address the labor shortages being experienced by multinationals across the world. Again, Canada has committed to us that they are ready to examine this project on the matching, grant in, matching investment initiative that is, whatever the country put up, they will match it so that we can advance this project and program. This is ready for implementation across the region. And if I am, if I am not staying true to the commitment, you can raise your hands and object. But we are, I'm saying these things here not lightly because all of us need to be accountable for the commitments we are making. And all of us must work together to realize the commitments that we are making. The UAE One Million Coders Initiative, through the growing levels of cooperation between CARICOM and the United Arab Emirates, they have now proposed to train one million young CARICOM na nationals who will be eligible to sign up online for the CODAS initiative, free of cost, over a three years period in the following areas, programming fundamentals, data science fundamentals, and Android developer fundamentals. And they are willing for us to implement this in our primary and secondary school system, targeting one million children across the region. The ferry service, we would have coined the term, the coalition of the willing, and the region is willing to move forward with this ferry service. With the help of Trinidad and Tobago, we have advanced work on the implementation of a regional ferry service. Tremendous progress would have already been achieved. We are now working on the commonality of systems, customs, like the sanitary systems, immigration systems, so that it will be seamless. We will have a single window operating in all the countries. We're starting with Guyana, Barbados, and uh, Trinidad and Tobago as the test. And only announcing that, we are already getting tremendous private sector interest to take this in the wider region, and this will be an important development for our region. In the single window operation that we are looking to achieve, we want when a container is on that ferry or on that ship from Guyana to go to another destination in the region, it must be pre-cleared, pre-cleared through a rules-based system because we'll have customs of everyone sharing offices within the region so that it ease of doing business, improve competitiveness, and reduce delays. And all of this are cost-saving measures for the private sector in our region. Whilst we are doing this, we understand that we need to be deeply connected with Northern Brazil and Suriname and French Guyana. 
For this reason, President Santoki and I are pushing ahead with the building of a bridge across the Quarantine River. And then uh, President Santoki is working on a project to link French Guyana to Suriname. And we are building 45 roads in the first phase of the highway to northern Brazil so that we'll be re-engineering the transport and logistics hub through uh, northern Brazil, through uh, Guyana, into the region, and all the way up to north. For this, the distribution sector in the region needs to rethink its strategy. And we are saying that the distribution sector in the region needs to position itself with this, these developments that are taking place. Regional security. Regional security is also a major concern for us. We are working with the US, we are working with the UK, we are working with our friends in CELAC to enhance regional security. But it remains a daunting task. Because we have expansive waters to cover. We have expansive waters to cover. And the security of this region ensures the security of important development partners. Therefore, investment in the security of this region is investment in your own security also. And we need to advance this conversation how we mobilize investment in security in this region to ensure that you are also secure. Our United States uh, friends and cabinet members are here. I think this requires serious and immediate attention. Energy security. I believe that we have the capability and the capacity now with what is taking place in Suriname, Guyana, with renewables, with Trinidad and Tobago, to build an energy infrastructure that would ensure this region rem did not remains, this region become energy secure long into the future. We need to sit down, articulate a regional energy plan that guarantees regional energy security, just like we are working on a plan that guarantees regional food security. This is an important agenda item that we must confront. In relation to the adaptation fund, let me first say that we support firmly the Bridgetongue Initiative. We support as a region firmly the Bridgetongue Initiative. Let me hear you in a round of applause how strongly we support the Bridgetongue Initiative. We believe that this initiative must now form the basis to restructure existing financing within the region and also outside of the region for the developing world and also be the fundamental pillars that new financing, the conditions that new financing must come with. And we are also going to take responsibility for ourselves. To this end, I want to say that to support these efforts, adaptation efforts of the region. Guyana is committing two million US dollar out of our revenue earned from the sale of carbon credit as a part of our LCDS to the Regional Adaptation Fund. In keeping with our announcement, with our announcement of building prosperity for the region, we are pleased to also announce that three million US dollars is committed by Exxon Mobile Global Trust Fund for sustainable projects to build resilience and improve productivity within the region, including food security. With this support, the Regional Adaptation Fund will have an investment of five million US dollars to start with. Just this morning, I, went, I met with Minister Hussein, Canada's Minister of International Development, and we agree on the importance of ramping up access to climate financing at scale 
and using efficient mechanism to do so. And in saying this, I reminded the minister that there is a substantial commitment that was made to heads at the Canada CARICOM Summit. And we are now looking in the coming weeks to activate that commitment to have those funds dispersed and ready to support the region's adaptation and resilience strategy. In foreign relations, we intend to activate fully the participation of CARICOM in Kenya. The CARICOM house in Kenya is already activated with Barbados taking up their position. We are going to work to have as much CARICOM countries in the CARICOM house in Kenya so that we can have a wider and fuller presence there. We're strengthening the relationship with the African Union, including the integration of the work of the two secretariats, and we will look to revitalize the OACP. We have to revitalize this organization. Saudi Arabia, still on foreign policy, has ongoing 650 million US dollars approved in projects in 2023, 650 million US dollars of project under implementation in this region. 150 million US dollars of project is already approved and in the process of disbursement. A third 100 million US dollars of project is approved and awaiting formal sign off. And we have 400 million US dollars of project in the pipeline to be discussed and finalized with Saudi Arabia. Those are the project portfolio. This is the project portfolio that we have with Saudi Arabia. The CARICOM Secretariat. This term, in this term, we'll be addressing the continued strengthening of the CARICOM Secretariat to ensure greater financial stability and the build out of a CARICOM office complex annex. CSME. We can talk from now till the next two days here. Prime Minister Motley, I will have to invite you here. But Prime Minister Motley laid down the realities in our last meeting. We have a hundred and how many pages, SG? One. We have 113 pages of decisions under the CSME, CSME, that is awaiting implementation. 113 pages of decisions under the CSME that is awaiting implementation. We must correct this. We cannot, we cannot move forward without correcting this. We have a responsibility to correct this. I started my brief presentation by alluding to the fact that I believe we have to be accountable to the people of this region. I've demonstrated areas in which we are working, areas in which we are committed, and we are publicly stating these commitments. Your leaders work tirelessly. Sometimes I see the comments. It is not easy in this complex and challenging global environment to get the attention of anyone for this region. It's not a God-given right that we get anyone attention. Every day we go out there fighting for attention of this region in the interest of the people. That requires diplomacy, hard work, networking, building relationship. You can't do that sitting at home. These frank conversations, all of us must speak about so the population of this region understand the realities that we are faced with. I thank you and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the formal 
ceremony with the presentation by Dr. Irfan Ali. I'd like to ask you to take your seats, please. And we're going to ask you to remain seated while, the, while Dr. Ali and the heads first make their way out of the auditorium and then the special invitees after that, and then we'd ask for the rest of us to leave. And just as our leaders came into the auditorium, we'll invite our students who escorted them to return for our very important guests, as we thank you for joining us for the opening ceremony this evening. We thank our performers that made the ceremony a truly enjoyable experience, uh, the singing, the dancing, the drumming. We thank our religious leaders for praying with us. And so our students are here from our various city schools. We acknowledge Minister of Education Priya Manikchan, very proud of her students, I'm sure. As our leaders depart the auditorium, may we continue to forge a Caribbean community that is inclusive and resilient, a community that is a unified competitive force in the global arena, as we heard just now from His Excellency, a region where every citizen is secure, and a community that shares opportunities and economic, social, and cultural prosperity. We thank everyone for tuning in from across the Caribbean, and we welcome our visitors to our beautiful country. Best wishes for a successful 46th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM. Our leaders are taking their leave from the auditorium at this time. Following the heads, heads of, of government, government will be the special the guests. Up to the reception, we are about to put a close on this broadcast. And they're being accompanied by students from various schools from across the country, making their way up to cocktail reception being hosted upstairs, the National Cultural Center. And of course, you are listening to coverage of the 46th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government opening ceremony of CARICOM and uh, we were pleased to bring you coverage here from the National Cultural Center as we shared with you what will be happening here in Georgetown, Guyana over the next uh, few days and uh, of course uh, Dr. Carla Barnett, Secretary General of CARICOM in her remarks spoke about the one CARICOM and where we will be headed and task the heads of government over the next few days uh, what is expected. Making his way up now, Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. As they head to that reception. Yes, during Dr. Carla Barnett's message. Uh, she spoke on a regional and global agenda that it needs to be carefully looked at to advance regional cooperation and the regional dynamism. Members of the diplomatic community as well make their way up to the reception uh, various from various parts of the world. Dr. Carla Barnett also anticipates the exchanges with international partners that will happen over the next few days to further enhance the regional integration. She spoke about culture and the role of culture.
which is a very integrated in CARICOM, and that was a testament from the various cultural displays that we saw this evening emanating from the stage of the National Cultural Center. Roosevelt Skerritt, uh, the outgoing chairman of CARICOM, spoke as well and referenced the rise in agriculture across the entire Caribbean region on uh, Vision 25 by 2025. I spoke about lowering the food import bill, and this will be done through the aggressive approaches that must be made and in, as well encouraging food security through Vision 25 by 2025 spoke about the Argyle Declaration there in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and how CARICOM was able, was able to lead by example of what the region is about, and that is about ensuring peace, ensuring the calm during that testing time that we saw here in Guyana with efforts from Venezuela. Spoke highly of President Ali and his happiness that he is passing on the baton to President Ali to be able to make the necessary inputs uh, in CARICOM and to effect the change that is needed. President Ali spoke extensively on spoke extensively on the people, the peace, the security, good governance and all the various elements that will make up CARICOM. Charging those as well who have not been able to attend thus yet the opening ceremony but will be here in the next few days about what is to come, that serious work needs to happen. Spoke extensively as well on regional integration and the ferry service that will be operational, piloted among the three countries, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Barbados and once that comes on stream we will be able to see uh, much relief as it relates to the CARICOM region. Just to reiterate that some of the thematic areas of focus for this year's conference will be on the CSME, climate resilience, agriculture, food and nutrition security, energy security, regional security, climate change and climate financing, global and hemispheric issues, the 2024 ICC Men's T20 World Cup, as well as regional integration, reparations and foreign and community relations. As well, there will be cross-cutting issues discussed on youth, civil society and the CARICOM private sector. These business sessions will commence tomorrow happening at the Guyana Marriott Hotel in Kingston, Georgetown and will go until the 28th. A heads of government retreat will be held on February 27 and uh, this will continue across uh, the length and breadth of Guyana everyone. We will be keeping you updated here on the National Communications Network Incorporated. So on behalf of myself, the entire technical team here at NCN, and as well those from the Department of Public Information, we bid you farewell from the National Cultural Center, and we will keep you updated across all of the business sessions on CARICOM.